Hello guys. So today in this lecture, I'll be doing something new. I'll be leading you through creating an ASP.NET 5 MVC website with React component. And I will build a simple and realistic comments box. And yes, you heard it right. It will be on the latest platform from Microsoft ASP.NET 5, which was released only last month, you know, in the .NET conference. So we'll be actually guiding to this uh, slideshow and I'll be building the code base from a tutorial, official tutorial of react.js.net. And I will put that um, link of the documentation in the description of this video. So we'll have to create a project in Visual Studio 2019 community version 16.8 plus using model view controller template and I will name it react demo and you may name it whatever you like. So let's flip over to Visual Studio now. So the Visual Studio 2019 is now in front of me and I will cre create a new project. Go for the ASP.NET Core Web application, click on next. Name this project React Demo and click on create. I'll go with the ASP.NET Core 5.0 and I'll highlight model view controller and click on create, clicking all these as the default. Okay, and click on create. Now the Re React demo project with model view controller template is created and sitting in front of me. So let's click over to the slideshow again to see what is the next step forward. So remove the following default contents. So the controller and the home controller default home controller is being asked to be removed as well as the views home and views shared folders. Okay. Now in the controllers folder, I have got a home controller.cs. So home controller is already created for me. So what I will do instead, I will um, do the bits of changes rather than remove it and recreating it. So what else I have to do is I have to create, I have to remove these views home and shared folders. So I will delete it. Click on shared folder, click on delete, confirm. So these folders under the views folder are deleted. Okay. So what next? This is the next slide which tells me to install react.js.net and how right click the project and click on the manage NuGet packages and browse and select react.aspnet and then install this new get package. Okay. So I will do that. So I will again flip over to Visual Studio. And right click on this project node. And then manage NuGet packages. And I have none installed. I will click on browse and look for react.asp.net react.asp.net okay so it will get me react.asp.net and i will install click on install click on i accept in the license acceptance so react.asp.net package is installed so let's see the next step So install a JavaScript engine. So while managing NuGet packages, we need to install a JavaScript engine. So I'll have to install. There are three packages. One is JavaScript engine dot engine switcher dot V8 and install the following native assembly based on the architecture and engine choice. Engine JavaScript engine switcher dot V8 dot native dot win, win x64 and also in the install this javascript engine switcher dot extensions dot ms dependency injection so i will install all of them and then come back so i'm installing javascript engine switcher dot v8 so javascript engine switcher dot v8 is installed 
and I will do the rest of the two. So it's all in the drop down list because I have tried them earlier. So JavaScript engine switcher dot va dot native win x64. Browse for that. All right, and then install. So I have installed three of these. The last one that is remaining is this one javascript engine switcher dot extensions dot ms dependency injection. So I will get back to Visual Studio again and install the last of the lot. Click on I accept. Now you can see that I have installed all of these four packages. One is the react engine and another three are for javascript engine all right so next we'll have to modify the startup class so what we'll have to do is we'll have to use the following using statements microsoft.aspnetco.http and these two and the last one so i will come back to the view studio again and i will just get rid of all these tabs open tab just close them close all tabs right and then click on startup.cs and i will add these four using statements and do them just below the last using statement okay and click on save all and then i'll have to add just right above this services.add controllers with views another block of code which is here services dot add singleton singleton services uh, http contact accessor this is a built-in service and services dot add react and this part services dot add js engine switcher where excuse me options goes to options dot default engine equals v8 js engine dot engine name so make sure a js engine is registered or you will get an error okay so this part was done in accordance with this slide modify configure services method add the following code directly above services dot add controllers with views and next is i'll have to modify the configure method for actually configuring the uh, this request pipeline or middleware pipeline so let's switch over to visual studio again and above just the use static files i'll copy this code Above this, I'll add this code. Within this block of comments. Okay, so app dot use React initialize React JS dot it must be before the static files. That is the app dot use static files middleware. All right, so it it sets something. It it gives a comment if you would like to read you are most welcome but we'll come back to it when the time is appropriate at the moment i am just skipping these comments okay and then again dub, uh, this, save this file now finally and this view imports file i will be using a using statement using react dot ASP.NET okay and then again save and then I'll have to create the basic controller and the view the controller is already in front of me I haven't removed this controller so I will get the bits out that is important and leave the bits that are I mean uh, get rid of the bits that are not required okay so I'll just leave the index action result index action method and delete this part and i need to delete this part as well right and then right click index and add a view and reserve view empty and click on add it will add a index view for this index action method 
the razor view empty index.cshtml click on add and then i will get rid of this uh, template code and then copy the code on my clipboard okay this is the clipboard code that i got from this documentation and you can see when i created the index view for this um, index action method it all automatically created the home home folder within the views folder and created this view index.cshtml in a real asp.net mvc site you use a layout however to keep this tutorial simple we will keep all the html in one view file okay that is the index view file okay now we have to create a javascript file and we will create a tutorial.jsx file as per this tutor, uh, this slide okay so we have done all this we have created basic controller and view okay and then we will um, we had already removed the contents of the new view file with this following and then i will create a component and uh, this component will be in this structure comment box in the top level and then comment list it's a um, this child um, node you can say child uh, component and this is a child of this comment list and then comment form is a child of comment box but it's at the same level as the comment list okay and this is react is itself a comment you know it's all about modular composable comments okay and i will put this i mean comment box i mean markup within the tutorial.jsx so let's switch over to visual studio now and i will create a first file add within this dub 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 root folder within the js i'll click on create add new item and in asp.net core web and this is a javascript file it's a jsx file rather jsx file and this is known as tutorial.jsx okay tutorial.jsx now let's build the comment box component so for that uh, the code will be this class comment box extends react.component and it returns class name comment box and hello world i have a comment box okay this div is not the html div this will be a different you know this is react component okay so i'll click on save all let's say okay here you have to notice that you know the native html component name start with the lowercase letter while custom react class name begins with uppercase letter like comment box okay and at this point we are ready to run this application so if everything is all right let's you will get a browser stating hello world i am a comment box now you can see hello world i am a comment box so congratulations you have just built your first react component you can leave the application now running while you continue building the next part which you will build in the next part okay now what's happening over here if you see this jsx you know, file so the first thing you'll notice that here it is a xmlish type of syntax okay div and end div okay and then if you pre-compile if you use a pre-compiler that translates this this is the syntactic sugar to this plain javascript which is in this file this is the plain javascript okay this is a plain javascript and this was the syntactic sugar that was entered in the tutorial file so what will you observe is that we are defining a new javascript class that extends from the react component class okay so in our class we will define some properties and some 
and some methods to build from what react component already gives us the most important of these method is called the render method okay react dom dot render which returns a tree of react component that will eventually render to html the div tags are not actual dom nodes okay so this div tag or you know this syntactic sugar are not actual dom nodes they are instantiation of react div components you can think of these as markers or pieces of data that react knows how to handle react is safe okay we are not generating html strings so xss protection is the default now you don't have to return basic html you can return a tree of components that you for someone else build this is what makes react composable the key tenet of maintainable front ends now react dom dot render instantiates the root component starts the framework and injects the markup into a raw dom element provided as the second argument okay right the react dom module exposes dom specific methods while react has core tools shared by react on different platform react native okay so we'll end this tutorial over here